Hi there, and welcome to another interview. Today I've got the fabulous Laura with me, and I think it's going to be an amazing interview, but I would always start with the same question I ask absolutely everybody. Hey, Laura, why did you become carnivore? Hi, Stephen. Thank you for having me on your channel here today. Um, I became carnivore just two years ago, yesterday, um, and I had... Uh, changed my diet and the way I ate in July of 2021. Um, years of tweaking things, trying this, trying that. I did the whole gluten-free thing because thought maybe that was an issue. Um, never actually went on a diet though because I, in my head I knew that if I used the word I'm on a diet or the words I'm on a diet, I would immediately sabotage myself. So I tweaked my diet but continued to probably put on two to three pounds a year, every year. Um, and even though I worked out like a crazy person too. So um, anyway, so July 21, I decided I was going to try ketovore. I'd heard about ketovore. And so I was protein heavy, um, just a little bit of vegetable. But then in um, November, December, and January, I decided to try some keto treats that were um, being shown on different um social media platforms and they used uh, artificial sweeteners, excuse me, natural sweeteners, but were low glycemic. And so erythritol, monk fruit, stevia, things like that. And I was always someone who was never a huge sweets person. I liked sweets. I would eat them occasionally, but I would much rather have uh, sit down with a bag of potato chips and some sour cream or some pretzels or crackers. And so um, it went from someone who didn't really have a sweet tooth in that three month period. And I'm not saying I ate sweets every day during that time, but if I made a carnivore cheesecake, or excuse me, keto cheesecake for Thanksgiving, I brought it to Thanksgiving, but everybody maybe, or three people maybe had a tiny bit. So who ends up eating the rest? Me. And, um, and then for Christmas, it was keto truffles and then for new year's it was some kind of nut and dark chocolate cake thing anyway by january 1st i was a raging sweet maniac every hour of the day i wanted something sweet i could not believe that i had done this to myself so i happened to have seen an interview uh with dr barry and he was interviewing Bella from Steak and Butter Gang. And I decided to check them out. I was so amazed at the results she had had. So I went on and what are you? were they talking about? You were there at that time, Stephen. Um, they're talking about priming and how it makes all cravings go away. I've always been a meat lover anyway. Um, I used to be able to put down quite a large steak myself my uncles would always laugh and say we can't imagine where you're putting all that you must have hollow legs so anyway it was a, a perfect thing for me to try i could have all the meat i wanted as much as i wanted i could stuff myself i could even have snacks and that's how i got started and it did it completely stop the sweet cravings completely it sure did probably within three days of priming it is so powerful, and I, I on a lot of other um, carnivore platforms now. I know people. You know, I've met people at meetups and that, and I, I go in and out of all these different platforms, and nobody else talks about that. Um, and I think it's so powerful. So I always bring it up in the other meetings and try to explain to people. You know, a lot of these meetings, it's a lot of women, and they just don't believe that they should be eating that amount of food. But I'm living testament that it works. Yeah, I think you are. Um, before we go any further, because I think people won't believe this, could you just tell me how old you are? <laughs> I'm 69 years young, I like to say. And I th yeah, when we spoke... Um, or when I first saw you on Facebook, you'd mentioned that you're reverse aging. And that's a real 
common thing, I think, in carnivore. I think you were surprised that I'm 60 this year. You do look absolutely amazing. And I asked you to turn off the light as well because um, you don't need artificial lighting or anything because you just look look amazing for 69. Oh, well, thank you so much. It's very kind of you to say. <laughs> um so what sort of health issues or sort of energy issues or sleep issues did you resolve with carnivore? Okay. Um, well, I was uh, having some hair loss, actually. I had about a dime-sized spot at the top back of the crown of my head that I had lost um, the hair. Don't know why. Um, so I think that has definitely helped. It's made my hair thicker. Um, what a fun thing I always like to mention. I, these eyebrows are not colored at all. This is my natural color. But before I started carnivore, I was almost all silver. So one of the first things that happened in probably that three months of being with uh, the SBG gang is my eyebrows went back dark. <laughs> so I always like to point that one out because people think it's crazy, but it, it happened. Um, I was actually having to use something to darken my eyebrows up until that point. Now they're fine. Um, let's see, uh, joint pain, definitely, uh, inflammation was a big thing. Obviously weight. Um, I did lose weight. I had lost about 17 pounds in the ketogenic phase of my, uh, dietary changes, but I lost it really rapidly and it left my face looking really old. Um, it was commented on, actually, my my daughter and son-in-law at Christmas that year, my son-in-law asked my daughter if I had not, if I had been sick and she didn't tell him. And she said, no, but yeah, she looks awful. Well, I really did. It really did affect uh, my face. So carnivore has definitely brought that back my skin, I think there's still maybe some that needs to be taken care of, but um, it really did fill my face back in, even though my face is much thinner now. And if Steven shares any pictures, you're going to see that definitely, but um, definitely the skin. Um, I mentioned inflammation. Uh, my sleep is still kind of on the erratic side. It just depends. I do sleep better now, but I still have nights and I really think maybe a lot of those are when I stay too low fat, um, that those might be when I have the sleeping issues. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, let me just I'll go, I'll go, go ahead. Oh, well, I'm one out of was. Oh, go ahead, Stephen. Well, I just wanted to pick up on a couple of things you were saying there because um, it's quite strange, Laura, because many things I've had, I was going gray and... Um, in fact, when I first started doing YouTube videos, I'd get a bit of mascara and I'd actually oh. get rid of all the, all the gray here, which but this is not dyed. Um, I'm full transparency with everything I do. And obviously I thought, well, this was, and this was when I was keto and I had exactly the same comments. It was the lightest I'd ever been, but people were saying, you're a bit gaunt looking, you know, you look like you need a good meal. And I thought, well, I've lost a ton of weight. I thought I looked okay, actually. It was other people telling me I looked gaunt. It's only when I went on Carnivore and looked back at old pictures of me on Keto, I think, wow, I, I did look quite poorly. And I was going very grey. And I think it was just interesting you said about, you know, going, to, you know, the little bit of hair loss and the, the greyness and your eyebrows. I think that's really interesting because um, many people think that's just exclusive to females so i really wanted to jump in and say no it actually happens to males well i have a fair few coached clients that are male and thinking wow my hair is better and i'm less gray is that really possible and they they just don't believe that it could be down to you know eating more meat and i think you i think you're right about the sleep if, you, if you're eating um not enough fat that can be a, a, a thing that sorts that out actually sorry you, you were going to say an extra thing i'm really sorry about that one other thing that I think is kind of interesting, but crazy. I have, um, I don't have varicose veins, but I had on my left leg down toward the bottom of the calf uh, in the front, I have a cluster of, they call spider veins. You know, they're much finer. Well, what I noticed this year is 
about half of those spider veins are gone because I had a cluster and that cluster is now far less dense and far fainter. So I think that's pretty cool. I, I do too. And before we were recording, there was one other thing we were talking about. So just so people know my situation, uh, in my 40s, I developed cataracts. And I do attribute that to the high carbohydrate diet. And I had an eye operation or eyes operation. And I had both my lenses replaced. Now, you were telling me that um, you were talking about macular degeneration and, and your journey. Would you be able to repeat that about this? Yes. About five years ago, um, I was <laughs> in for a regular eye exam for contact lenses, and I was with a new optometrist, and I came, uh, I went ahead and had one of those photographs they do, and that's what shows if you have any macular degeneration, the drusens show up in this photograph. Well, lo and behold, they were totally surprised to see that I had them. Um, I had the drusens and I had early stage macular degeneration. So right away, you know, they wanted me to go on the Reds um, supplement. And of course I did because at the time they're telling me this is what I need. So I probably took that for about a year. And then, I don't to begin with, I'm terrible about remembering to take anything anyway. So maybe it was a year and a half. But then I saw um, Chris Kenobi and Lisa Wiedemann's um, YouTube about the Areds study and that it's really not a good medication and that there was really no help coming from it. So I immediately stopped. So long story short, I happened to be going to an ophthalmologist because, like Stephen, I had my lenses replaced right before Christmas. Um, I did have some cataract and was happy to find out that the um, what what determines whether or not you should have cataract surgery now is how it affects your quality of life, not how cloudy your eyes are. And luckily for me, I'm very active, <laughs> and it was really affecting. Uh, so many of the things I do, do I need this pair of glasses? Can I wear contacts for this? Am I going to have an issue with sunglasses with my contacts if I'm doing this? So I really wanted to pursue this and found out that I could and decided to have the surgery. And I opted for these lenses that can actually be adjusted after they're implanted. So we're in the process of doing that. But in the meantime, the ophthalmologist said, oh, you realize you have this early stage macular degeneration and are you taking your reds? And I said, no, I'm not. And then went into the spiel about why I wasn't taking them anymore. Needless to say, he looked at my records from five years ago to today and there is no change in my eyes as far as um, additional drusens or anything. So I have to feel that I'm although maybe there's some damage initially, I'm hoping and praying that carnivore is going to take care of that. And even if it doesn't re reverse it, hold it where it is and I sh will be good. Yeah. And I think, I think if you had not gone carnivore and you'd been eating the standard American diet or other diets, I think there would have been progression because I do keep hearing these sort of stories. I mean, my uh, coached clients go from sort of in their twenties right up to 90 is the oldest person I've got. So obviously, if I'm dealing with the older end of the spectrum, um, we talk about things like cataracts, which are quite common if someone's had a high-carb diet, and other people who have avoided carbohydrates don't seem to have that problem. Um, you said you're very active. Do you work out? I do. I lift weights. I do spin class uh, one or two days a week. I play pickleball a couple times a week. I like to do yoga. I do some body weight um, stretching every morning. I go on biking trips. <laughs> so um, I paddleboard, I kayak, I pretty much do it all. So when people meet you uh, and maybe the uh, subject of age comes up, are they quite surprised that you're in your seat? Yes, yes, yes. I get a lot of, um, I hope I look and are as active as you are when I'm that age, a lot. 
So when you went cro- uh, carnivore, uh, what did your f- friends and family think? <laughs> My kids were happy because I wasn't going to be pushing vegetables anymore. And I'd been pushing them my whole life. Um, I have three sons and a daughter, and they were all, and six grandchildren. And they're all like, oh, grandma, mom, all of a sudden we don't have to have vegetables. <laughs> As a matter of fact, a couple of the grandsons said, you just eat meat, I'm moving in with you. But um, anyway, they, my kids, they know that, you know, I'm always about, what's going to be best for my longevity, what will keep me the healthiest. I don't want to be a burden to anybody. And um, they're okay with it. Uh, My friends, they think I'm a little, "Mm." (laughs) but I've been doing this for two years. We have social things all the time. Um, I have, uh, so I recently moved to Tennessee. I moved to Tennessee last year full time. And I still have my friend groups in Illinois and I have my friend groups here. One of the first people I met here in Tennessee happens to be a carnivore. She lives about a mile down the road from me. How lucky was that? And I met her at a a health retreat in this area. So that really worked out nicely. And the rest of our group is not, but they tolerate very nicely. (laughs) And we do have a lot of social events. We go out on the boat here all the time. We play pickleball. We just, we had a a, a card game day yesterday. And we bring something to share that is carnivore and meets what we need. And there's a lot of charcuterie boards at all things now too, because they know that we can eat that if we choose. So I have to say, although my friends aren't ready to jump on the bandwagon with me, they're okay. You know, they take it with a grain of salt and they like, they like me and it works. I mean, can they see that you're really active and it's improved your body composition and your energy? Yeah, they can, but they're not sold. Unfortunately, we, we keep trying. And I say we, because of my carnivore friend is very vocal who lives here. Um, we, we keep pushing the idea that there's a reason why we are the way we are and that that correlates to what we're doing. But until they're ready to see that for themselves, um, you know, they, most of the girls, you know, they, they watch pretty much try to watch what they eat. They exercise. Um, they are an active group. Uh, the ones here in Tennessee, especially. So they, And they're all about 10 years younger, too. Uh, One or two of them are close to my age. But the rest are about, I want to say, they're probably 8 to 10 years younger. And so, I don't know. I guess you have to come to it yourself. My son, for years, my youngest son, he he was a big lifter in that, in the gym. He told me for years, and I'll add to this a little bit, too. um, He told me for years that he thought I worked out too much. And that that was one of the reasons that I couldn't lose weight and what woman's going to believe that even even from my my son it's like oh i can't imagine that that's the case but so let me step back a minute so i can add to this in t- july of 2021 when i <laughs> there's a bird just landed here when i went car uh, when i went ketovore i also had been nursing an injury in my left foot that whole summer but i was still hiking and biking and going to the gym probably five days a week. And I was learning to play pickleball and I was going to lessons as well as playing. And I know one week I played 21 hours that week. And other weeks, you know, maybe I played six, seven times that week because not only was I doing two hours of lessons, I was going and playing for two hours in the morning and in the evening or in the afternoon. So all of this activity. And finally, I was at Indiana Dune State Park and did a dune hike and just trashed that left foot after climbing that dune i could i was in so much pain i decided i had to go back and see the uh, orthopedic man we did an mri here i had a stress fracture in my left foot that i'd been running around on all summer and all spring and he said we well, are going to have to be in a boot for six weeks and you can't do anything so not only that was the beginning of August. No, I'm sorry. That was around September 6th. So from September 6th 
until February 14th of the next year, I was in a walking boot because that foot would not heal. So I had uh, the initial 17 to 19 pound weight loss happened between September and November. Thus, that's why my face <laughs> didn't do so well. That was a, a pretty rapid weight loss. But the whole background of this is that I did it. Lost that weight with a little dietary change and sitting on my behind doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> except swiping my finger on my iPad as I read book after book after book. Uh, the foot didn't heal. I ended up finally having to get this device they use with sports um, sports people. Uh, and uh, I know a lot of football, anyway, basketball. And it focuses the calcium right from your bloodstream to the break. And I ended up having to do that for two months. That was at the beginning of the carnivore journey. Uh, I unfortunately didn't have time to to sit and wait and see if carnivore would heal that. <laughs> I needed to get up and moving again. So six months in a walking boot is tough. Oh, I bet. And um, your son was ahead of the curve there, saying that you know working out too much can mean that you're not losing weight. That's, yes. that's definitely something I would say as a personal trainer. I definitely say that to people. They need to be careful with with overtraining. <laughs> So I have to add to that because after right after right before I moved here to Tennessee, the uh, wellness center in our village or community had started a spin class, and I loved spin class. I had been doing it for years, uh, three times a week at least, and here I was able to do it four times a week. But I did discover that I was starting to get thicker around the waist again. And kind of stopping and thinking back, it's like, mm. and then I'm still playing pickleball. Uh, we don't ride bikes here that much, but when I'm traveling, sometimes I do. So, and then I would go still do yoga. Um, anyway, I decided I needed to draw back that it was, again, too much cardio coming in. So, and it did make a difference. So now I try to stick to two days a week and um, just added yoga and Pilates if I want um, just a little bit more body weight stuff. And then of course I left. Yeah. And lifting is, is really fantastic. Um, one of the things that we were saying before we started recording, we were talking about what you were, you were telling me about before pictures, you, you know, when you didn't look great, you didn't like pictures being taken. And I was smiling to myself because people have heard on my channel, I've said this many times, if I was ever out and I was embarrassed with how I looked a lot of times, I would stand behind a wall or I would, you know, be behind a lamppost and put my head out because I didn't want people to see how I looked. And I think I really regret that now because they're very powerful, aren't they, these before and after pictures. But I have managed to get uh, one or two of you so people will see the difference. Um, and you mentioned some dress you couldn't get into for 20 years or something. Oh, not 20 years, but I, I've had it. I, the dress moved to me, moved with me to Tennessee because I'd found this dress probably four or five years ago. And it was just stunning, fantastic, a great price, but it was too tight. And I thought, oh my gosh, it was such a good price. I'm going to keep it and hope someday I'll fit into it. And I um, wore it for our holiday gala this year and felt fantastic and got a million compliments what more could you ask for so i'm so glad that i hung on to it and then two days later we had another winter gala <laughs> from diff a different group and i found had found another great dress that i don't think i would have been able to wear before and wore that and got a ton of compliments on that so uh, it's been a fun holiday season we also went to a new year's eve bash at the yacht club here and had a great time and once again, I found a spectacular dress at a great price <laughs> and felt amazing. Uh, it's so, I I feel so much better now. And I'm not talking just with appearance. I feel physically so much more, more energy and better now than I did when I was 48. And I think that's sad that I'm almost 70 and now I feel this way. I'm not complaining, 
But it's sad that I didn't know this sooner and all those things that I was doing and all that misinformation that I was listening to my entire life just put me there. Um, I never, I was never a binge, a binge eater or, you know, ate tons of crazy things. I overate sometimes. Yes, we all do. I was telling Stephen earlier, I was not, um, and I think I mentioned that too, I was not a sweets person. I was a potato chip person. <laughs> that was my go-to thing, my comfort food. And um, I would sometimes, I, I guess I could say sometimes I binged on that. But that was not, it might be one month, I, you know, I had it once or twice that month, and then maybe I'd have four months before I did that again. So I always was trying to moderate what I was doing. What, what do they say? Oh, you know, moderate what you have and you'll be fine. Well, no, you, you're not. If, if your body doesn't do well with carbs, you're never going to be fine moderating carbs. So I, I feel like it's so many wasted years when I could have felt more amazing, could have had more energy to do things with my kids uh, when I was younger. And I would like people to know that sooner. They could look at me now and say, wow, oh, you know, I want to look that good when I'm that age. Well, start. If you're younger, start because just imagine what you're going to look like. Yeah. And I think you've hit the nail on the head. It's it's really the thing that drives me to do this the most because I feel exactly the same. I try not to be regretful of not knowing this information in my 20s and my 30s and my 40s, but I am. I am regretful. I wish I'd known more and I lost my parents when I was young and I think possibly I could have helped out in that situation for both of my, especially for my mother anyway. I don't want to get too uh, maudling. And you're right. Yes, it improves your appearance, but it's health as well. I mean, things like reversing type 2 diabetes is a thing I see constantly. And that's my specialist. I'm a specialist practitioner on obesity and diabetes. And the years before carnivore, low-carb and keto were just pitiful, really. You know, there wasn't much success. And the more I've taken out carbs out of my way of thinking and my way of talking to people, the more success you get. It's it, there is a direct correlation between reducing carbohydrates and improving your health. I think that's it's nice that you mentioned that as well because I don't think it is a weight loss diet. When many people try to say, "Well, it is a weight loss diet," because you lose weight, but it's not. It's about health. Weight loss, I think, is a side effect of eating properly. And, and right. I know that's, I know that seems obvious. And you mentioned in one of your posts about reversing type two diabetes. Do you do you uh, have personal experience of that, or have you just seen that a lot? I had been told many, many times um, as my when I had an annual blood work done that I was borderline diabetic. Um, oh, stop eating sugar. You need to stop eating sugar. And I'd say, I don't really eat sugar. I was, I, I drank coffee. I still do. <laughs> but I was using artificial sweetener. I wasn't using sugar in it. I, and again, as I said, I wasn't a big sweet tooth person. I was a savory, salty person. So, you know, the occasional time that I had something, uh, a cookie or a piece of cake, it was very occasional. So that was not the issue, but that's what they focus on. So they kept saying, oh, you need to cut down your sugar intake. And I'm like, I, I'm not eating sugar. So I don't understand where, what else should I be doing? But you never get that answer. So did I know at the time that carbs turned into sugar? I probably, maybe you hear that, but it's not really something that connects. So, but I ate pasta. I loved bread. Again, yep. potato chips, pretzels, crackers, you know, all those kinds of things. So even though I wasn't taking in sugar and they're telling me I'm pre-diabetic or I'm on the borderline of diabetes, and that was not in the family either. There's no health issues in my family. Uh, so, yeah. Yep. We're on the it's same page. Yeah. Bread and potatoes. If you get those out of your diet... That's going to get you a long way. And I think if people don't believe that carbohydrates are, well, they are, I mean, chemically, carbohydrates are sugar. But if you put some bread into your mouth and you chew it and you don't swallow it and you keep chewing, it gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. And I think you'd be very surprised. But bread and potatoes were my downfall. I was pre-diabetic. Very similar stories. Very similar stories. And I, I just want to thank you for coming on. 
Um, do you do you have anything that you'd like to say? I'm, I think you've really covered everything. But is there anything else you'd like to end with? Oh gosh, um, don't think of it as a diet. And I too, when I say to people, it's like, well, what is this diet you're on? I'm like, it's not a diet. It's a way. It's a way of life, and it's the appropriate way of life. So don't think of it as a diet. Um, one big thing, because I hear this so much across the platforms that I'm in, don't expect it to be immediate. Don't think that I hear so many times, well, I've been carnivore for four weeks or I've been carnivore for six weeks and I, I don't see any changes. You're going to see them, but you got to stick with it. Think about how long you have damaged your body with all the garbage and all the misinformation, it's not going to take, it might take years, but in the end, you're going to feel amazing. You're going to look better. The inflammation in your body will be gone. You're just, you're going to feel younger and have all this energy. Um, it's just, it's so powerful. And to go back to the beginning where I was talking about priming, that's something that is really, I believe, one of the key things in getting rid of cravings that people don't understand. They need to overfeed their body and let their body know they're going to be satiated and they're going to have food and the proper kind of food in order for your body to begin to let go and clean out and see the changes that you want to see.